In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll continue with volume 25, 11, 4, 19, 28. My truths are more than sun, Jesus says, uh, that gives light to the earth and invests and fixes it. And in fixing on it, it gives birth on the face of it for each thing to the effects and to the goods the light contains. So what Jesus is doing is he's giving birth to this new life that he wants to reign in us. This is why Jesus calls Louisa the newborn. Um, you know, Jesus says, you must be born again. And he teaches Louisa what that means to be born again. It's continually being born, continually becoming more of what we were the moment before. Uh, this is what God is asking. So <clears throat> on the face of it, and for each thing, to the effects and the goods that the light contains, but jealous, it d- does not detach its light from its center. So remember, the center is Louisa. Okay, so this light that God wants to give to us does not detach ourself away from Louisa. He says, uh, this is so true that as it moves on to illuminate other regions, the earth remains uh, the earth remains in the dark. On the other hand, the sun of my truths, while it does not detach from its center, Louisa, fixing itself in Louisa, forms in Louisa the perennial day. So this new day of of humanity uh, is to go back to where Adam was before the fall. So it's really not new. It's the oldest gift that God gave to humanity, God gave to Adam. So he says he wants us to begin to enter into this new light, this abundant light, this abundant life, this abundant love of God where we belong. And he says this. Vine 25, 11, 20, 19, 28. My daughter, dearest daughter of my divine will. One who is daughter of the divine will is in possession of the perennial day that knows no night. So here again, this is, this is something for us to, to understand. The one who possesses this day is Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. Now Jesus is saying, my dearest daughter, one who is daughter of the divine will. You are in possession of the perennial day that knows no night. This is what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to enter it. That's why we read what Jesus says to Louisa, so that we can learn how and why he wants us to live this life. A lot of people um, say, well, I don't really don't need to read the divine will. It's, It's ours. Well, yeah. It's, but Jesus is teaching us how and why this is ours. And if Jesus says, if you don't learn this, you're not going to be able to possess it fully. So he says, everything is light for the soul who lives in my divine will. Everything is light for Louisa. And Jesus is calling us into this light. Her properties are light. Her properties are beauty. Her properties are joy. Her properties are happiness. Her properties are heaven, not earth anymore. To see what Jesus is calling us to. That's why Our Lady says, my children are going to enter into eternity and and participate in the beatific vision. Well, where the devil and his children will not be able to enter into this light, not to enter ever to participate in the beatific vision. By 25, 12, 25, 19, 28. My daughter, the soul who lives in my divine will, this is Louisa, it is more than if I, God, made uh, the sun descend upon earth. It's more than the sun consuming the earth. He says, what would happen then? The night would be banished from the earth and it would always be full daylight. So he's saying, you who are reading the volumes, I'm calling you to full daylight. No more darkness. I'm calling you to possess the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, which Louisa possesses. 
I want you to participate in full daylight. Jesus says, this is nothing, nothing other than a simile of the soul who does my divine will and lives in my divine will. The soul who lives in the earth uh, of her uh, and the soul who lives in the earth of her human volition. So the simile is, is to live in the divine will is to be filled with light, filled with love, filled with life. Or to be filled with worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. We want to be to have this abundant life. But what's what's interesting is, is God is saying you can't do it without the divine will. It's impossible. So he says, the first makes descend not only the son of my divine will into her soul, but the whole of heaven into the soul. Do you want to see why the children of the divine will are happy? The whole of heaven is there. And and all we're doing is each day going through one room and another, entering into this whole of heaven. And it, it, it's going to take forever joy, happiness, peace to go through this. Therefore, with this son, the soul possesses the perennial day, a day that never sets, because the light has the virtue of putting darkness to flight. So the night of the passions, the night of weaknesses, the night of miseries, the night of coldnesses, the night of temptations cannot be there with this son, S-U-N. And if they wanted to draw near to form the seasons of the soul, the sun beats down its rays and puts all the nights to rush flight, saying the sun goes, I am here. And that's enough. My seasons are seasons of light, seasons of peace, seasons of happiness, seasons of perennial flowering. So this soul that we're talking about, Louisa, is the bearer of heaven upon earth. That's what God wants for us. For your family, for your friends, for your neighbors, for your coworkers, for your parishioners. God wants you to be the bearer of heaven upon earth. How? By entering into this light. On the other hand, for the soul that does not do my divine will and does not live in my divine will, it's more nighttime than daylight in her soul. Volume 25. 3, 3, 1929. As much as the divine will awaits everyone, it only finds Louisa, the little daughter, Louisa, the newborn of my divine will, who each day enters into the first acts of the creation of Adam, when our divine being made display of all our divine qualities to make of Adam the little king of our, of our inseparable son. Jesus says, as much as the divine will waits, it only finds little Louisa. That's what God's showing us. You want this gift? Go to Louisa. You want this gift? Read, study, put into practice what Jesus taught Louisa. Echo Louisa. Follow Louisa. We, we should say when we read this, oh, don't only, I want to be with Louisa. I want to have each day, I want to enter into the first act of the creation of Adam. So Jesus is showing us how to do the prevenient act. I want you to do, I want uh, your divine being to make a display of uh, in me, of all of your divine qualities. So that, that's what Louisa would say. I want this. Please, Jesus, I want this. Daughter, if you knew how much love the divine will awaits you, if we knew how much the divine will awaits us to make each day your little visit in in Eden, go to Eden every morning. I mean, he says, he says, visit me in each tabernacle. This is this is the uh, the gift that God is giving to humanity uh, to to go where Jesus is calling you. Each day when you visit Eden, each day when you visit me in the tabernacle, he says, uh, take it by the impetus of love, took the attitude of feast, of celebration in order to create Adam. Go visit the garden. Be in the garden. Rejoice in the garden. Watch God create Adam as he breathes into the dust. Don't limit God. Well, it's not for me. I can't do that. Well, you can't. You can't. You've just said no to God. Don't limit God. God says, go visit Eden. Visit Eden. I'm serious. 
Watch what God's going to show you. Volume 26, 6, 14, 19, 29. My daughter, this was the agreement between me and you, that I, God, would put the whole of creation in the bank of your soul, and you, Louisa, would give back to me with interest, filling it with your, I love you, I adore you, I praise you, I thank you, I glorify you. This is the rounds. This is the agreement that Louisa made. Jesus, I want to make that agreement too with Louisa. I want to pray the rounds. I adore you. I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I bless you. I adore you. Worship you in all of all of creation, all of redemption, all of sanctification. And since Jesus says, I saw you hampered because of a capital so great, this, this currency that's so great, and fearing that you might want to reject this great gift of me in order to encourage you to receive it, I, God, said to you, I am. He, he says God's name. I am content with a small interest. And we shall do the accounts every day here in Eden. So he calls us to Eden. I mean, don't think that this is only, don't think this is only for Louisa. Jesus is calling you to the Garden of Eden. Go there. Look all around. Breathe the air of the, the garden. Smell the flowers. Go there. How, how do we do it? How do, just go there. She tell, tell Louisa, take me to the garden. And then when you go out into your garden, God will give you little glimpses of here is where you are. He's going to show you this. I, I can guarantee you. In this way, we shall remain in agreement and always in peace, peace, joy, and happiness. And you shall not be worried uh, that your Jesus has placed you in, in your bank, a capital, infinite amount of gold, infinite amount of capital. So great. I'm 26, 9, 4, 1929. My daughter, courage, do not lose heart too much. This is for today. You must be courageous. You're going to see a lot of difficult things. Don't lose too, don't lose your heart. Don't, don't get to, don't get upset. Tell me who forms the day. So Jesus is bringing us back. Who formed this day? The sun, doesn't it? And why does it form the day? Because it is an act of my divine will. Now, as the earth rotates, the sides that move always away from the sun remain in the dark and form the night. And the poor earth remains gloomy as though under the mantle of sadness in such a way that all feel the reality of the night and the great change that the earth go undergoes to by having lost the beneficial sphere of the light of the sun. That is the, an act, the act of my divine will that has created the sun and preserves it with its continuous act. In the same way, Jesus says, as long as the soul prays, her round under the continuous act of my divine will. So Jesus is saying from volume 16 to volume 36, learn to pray the rounds. Learn. Under the continuous act of the divine will, it is always full daylight for the soul. Night, darkness, sadness do not exist. Courageous. You want to be courageous? Do your acts in the divine will. Learn how to pray your rounds. That's how that, there's no more sadness, there's no more darkness. The continuous act of my fiat, Jesus says, more than sun, smiles at the soul and keeps the soul in feast. But if the soul wanders about within her human will more than the earth, uh, more than earth, she remains in dark uh, in the nighttime of her human will. That lording over the soul produces darkness, doubts, sadness such as to form the true real night for poor humanity. Jesus, I trust in you. Courage. No, God's in charge. Who formed the day? It's the sun. He says, look at the sun. I'm going to give you daylight in your heart, your mind, your soul. Who can tell you of the great good of the most refulgent day? That an act of my divine will produces over the soul. With its continuous act, it produces all goods. It produces happiness in time and in eternity. Therefore, be attentive. When I, when I read be attentive, 
read, study, put this into practice. Enclose all of yourself within that single act, the prime act of the divine will, the prime act of God. Again, this is what you do when you do your prevenient act. You end. I, I want to enter into the single act of God. I want to enter into the prime act of God, the one act of God. And never go out of it, Jesus says, if you want to live happy and have your power of the life of the light of the day that never sets. It's an act of my divine will. He says, is everything for the soul. It is the continuous act that never ceases, never changes, more than a tender mother. It keeps one who abandons herself in its acts of light, clasps to its breast and nourishing the soul with divine light. It raises the soul as a birth from itself, the newborn. That's what God is calling us. Noble and holy. It keeps the soul sheltered within its very divine light. A new era is coming. It's the oldest thing that God gave to man. It's really not new. It's the life that God breathed into Adam. The life that Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and Eve, breathed into Louisa. This abundant light, life, and love. 526, 9, 8, 19, 29. When my supreme will lives inside a heart and lays the fullness of its endless light within it, it centralizes everything and everyone in that heart. It does everything. It renews everything. It gives back all that for centuries upon centuries. It has not been able to give through the other souls. The other souls were doing the will of God. Jesus is now teaching how to live in the will of God. And therefore, in the name of everyone, everything, past, present, and future, we can give back to God all the glory, all the love that God so rightly deserves from all of humanity. That's what he's offering to us. Your prayer life is going to change drastically. You wait till you see what God's going to do. So this creature can be called the dawn of the day. This creature can be called the dawn of the day, the dawn of a mystery. Well, read, listen to Archbishop Pichieri as he talks to us about Louisa. The daybreak that calls the sun, the sun that gladdens all the earth, the sun that illuminates the earth, the sun that warms the earth with its wings of divine light more than a tender mother, embracing everything. Fundicates everything, and with its kiss of light, it gives the most beautiful tints to the flowers, the most delicious sweetness to the fruits, the maturity to all plants. This is the garden. This is our life. This is where we're supposed to be. Though Jesus says this, oh, if my divine will reigned in the midst of creatures, he's waiting for this. He's waiting for us to receive this. How many prodigies it would not operate in their midst. We haven't seen anything yet. The prodigies that are going to come are going to, like I said before, it's going to knock your socks off. The prodigies are unbelievable what's coming. A new beginning for humanity, which is not new at all. It's what God wanted with Adam and all his children. By 27, 11, 30, 19, 29. This was the true order of creation, to find God, his creator, in Adam. That's the true order of creation, to find God where? In humanity, in each of Adam's acts, so that God might be able to give to Adam God's light, what God had established to give him from the beginning. So he says, our divine will, present in Australian God and in Adam in the beginning, made itself the bearer of the one and of the other, forming the full day in Adam. It placed in common the goods of both God and man. How happy was the condition of Adam when our divine will reigned in him. It can be said that Adam was growing on our, pater on our paternal knees, attached to our breast, from which Adam drew growth in his formation. This is why I, God, want that my divine will 
in each thought of creature have your I love you to call back the order between God and man. So he says to us through Louisa, I want my divine will. I want this. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. This I love you is going to call back. May your kingdom come and reign on earth, this dust as it is in heaven. Call back the order, the divine order between God and man. Without my fiat, there can be no day or sun. At the most, only a few tiny little flames that can hardly guide a step. See, we've been in darkness. Even with the beautiful light of the saints, we're still in darkness. Why? Sanctification hasn't happened. Now Jesus wants sanctification, this divine light, this divine sun to radiate in everyone and everywhere. Oh, if the souls knew what it means to live without my divine will, even if they were not evil and did some good, the human will is always night for the soul. The human will oppresses the soul. The human will embitters the soul. The human will makes the soul feel the weight of life. Therefore, be attentive. Read. Let nothing escape you that does not enter into my divine fiat, that shall make you feel the full day, the full light that shall give you back the order of creation. It shall call back the the harmony, that shall call back that peace in force, the continuing giving of your acts uh, to God. God breathes in us. We breathe back into God. It's his, not ours a continued receiving of your creator and embracing the whole human family in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future, you shall be able to impetrate that the order of the way in which they were created may come back to humanity. This is what where we are, that the night of the human will may cease and that the full day of my divine will may arise again in humanity as God breathed that rule of God, that breath of God into Adam. Image and likeness. Vine 27, 12, 18, 19, 20, 9. This ardor of love is ours that shall unite together that of creation and that of my incarnation and that shall make them one. It shall be an ardor of triumphing love and shall give the kiss of the triumphant love, the conquering love, the love that wins over everything to give the kiss of perennial peace, its kiss of light that shall put to flight the night of the human will and shall make the full day of my divine will arise that shall be the bearer of all goods of God. This is heaven. What does Jesus call the heaven? He calls heaven the wedding feast. The, the, the kiss of heaven and earth. What well, God created us to be one with him. That's what, what's coming. Vine 28, 4, 12, 19, 30. The son of my divine will never leaves the soul as it reflects itself in the soul with its light and more than sun acts as the divine sower with its reflections. It forms in the soul, its son in the creature. Therefore, For the soul who lives in my divine will, there are no more nights. There are no more sunsets or dawn or daybreak, but it is always full day because the light gives itself to the creature as her nature. It becomes the nature of humanity again. And what is more, the nature remains as one's property. More so since the son of my divine will possesses the source of light, God, as many sons as it wants to form, God's God's doing this, so many it forms. But with all of this, even though one who lives in my divine will possesses her own son, okay, that never withdraws, the son of my fiat, Jesus says, is always new light, new heat, new sweetnesses, new flavors, new beauties to give. When you, when you read the word new in the divine will, it's God, always God's light, God's heat, God's sweetness, God's flavors, God's beauty to give. The soul is always something to receive, and there are no pauses as with the sun that is under the vault of the heavens.
It's continuous light, love, and life of God. That's what's coming. That's what's here for those who want it. Volume 29, 9, 12, 19, 31. I, Jesus says, I continue to pray before the tabernacle of love. This is something that, that God is calling each of us to do, to spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, before the monstrance. And I, I thank God that Mary's Hill, Peter, has, has Eucharistic adoration between the talks. It's Jesus that he's calling us to. Here, Louisa, what, we echo Louisa. I continue to pray before the tabernacle of love. We pray before the monstrance of love. And in my interior, I said to myself, what do you do, my love, in this prison of love? What do you do? And Jesus, in all goodness, told me, my daughter, do you want to know what I do? I do my day. And then he goes, you must know this, that my whole life spent down here on earth, I enclosed within one day. I enclosed within one day. Okay, all the, all the life of Jesus was one day. My day begins with being conceived and being born. The veils of the sacramental accidents serve me as swaddling clothes for my teenage years. And then because of human ingratitude, they leave me alone and try to offend me. I do not exile. Left with only the company of some loving souls. Hopefully that's us. Left only with the only company of some loving souls who, like a second mother, cannot detach herself from me and keeps me faithful company. That's us each day. From the exile, I move on to Nazareth, doing my hidden life in the company of those few good souls who surround me. And I continue my day as creatures draw near to receive me. I do my public life, repeating my evangelical scenes, offering to each one my teachings, the helps, the comforts that are necessary for them. I act as a father. I act as a teacher. I act as a doctor. And if needed, I also as a judge. So I spend my day waiting for everyone and doing good to everyone. And oh, how many times I have to remain alone without a heart that will palpitate near me. I feel a desert around me and I remain alone, alone praying. And I feel the loneliness of my days that I spend in the desert towns down here. Oh, how painful it is for me, God, I who am. Heartbeat for each and every heart, jealous and I guard everyone, feeling isolated and abandoned by all. But my day does not end with a soul abandonment. There is, not only, there is not one day in which ungrateful souls do not offend me and receive me sacrilegiously. And I make, I make complete my day with my passion and with my death on the cross. Ah, sacrilege is the most ruthless death, death that I, Jesus, receive in this sacrament of love. So in this tabernacle, I do my day carrying out everything. I carry out in the 33 years of my mortal life. And just as in everything I did and do, the prime purpose, the prime act of life is the will of my heavenly father. That it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in this little host, I do nothing other than implore that one be my will with my children. I call you, Jesus is calling each and every one of us, in this divine will. I call you in this divine will, in which you find my whole life and act, and you, by allowing it, ruminating, thinking about it over and over and over, offering it, uniting yourself with me in my Eucharistic day to obtain my divine will, will be known and reign upon earth known by us. And so to you shall be, I, I shall be able to say, I do my day together with Jesus. When we spend time in the flood of the blessed sacrament, I do my day together with Jesus. We follow his holy humanity in everything that we think, say, and do. See, purgatory is going to be by getting rid of anything in us that is not following the holy humanity of Jesus. We are to be divine mirrors of Jesus. 
That's what Jesus says, one through 10. It's to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit, 11 through 19, and to receive the divine inheritance of the Father, 20 through 36. I do my day together with Jesus. That's your prevenient act in the morning. That's your actual acts throughout the day. Volume 29, 921, 1931. I was continuing my acts in the divine volition and I prayed my highest good Jesus to make the son of the divine will rise in each of my acts so that I might give back to Jesus in each of my acts, the love, the homage, the glory, as if I were forming for him in each act of mine, a day of divine light, a day of divine love, a day of profound adoration, a day communicated to me into my act by his most holy divine will. I give back to God what he breathes into me. I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I bless you. These are the rounds that Jesus is asking us to begin to pray. Learn to pray the rounds. Go to luisapicaretta.me. Download the rounds, especially for Advent. Begin to adore God and to love God and praise God and thank God and glorify God in the name of everyone and everything. So all of humanity is, is you're this an explosion of I love yous to the throne of God. Jesus wants this. Oh, how I would like to say in each of my acts, whether big or small, I make the day for Jesus to love him more. But while I was thinking of this, my beloved Jesus repeated his usual little visits to my soul and told me, Louisa, my daughter, my divine will is the true day for mankind. But in order to form this day, it wants to be called come divine will in our acts. Because as it is called, it so encloses itself in the act. When you say come divine will, breathe in my breathing, God says, okay. Beat in my heart beating, God says, good. Walk in my walking. Good. It encloses itself in the act to make its divine way arise in the soul. It has the virtue of changing the act, the word, the step, the joy, and the pains into the most splendid and enchanting days. So my divine will is waiting. And as the creature rises from her rest, uh, her night rest, to be called, come divine will, in order to form the new day of action in the soul. This is your prevenient act. And since it is the most pure light, it does not adapt itself to working in dark act of human will. But with its divine light, it changes the act into daylight. It forms it in the splendid day filled with heroic and divine actions with such order, with such beauty, with such worthy, only of its vivifying and operating virtue. It can be said that it is waiting behind the doors of the acts of each human being just as like the sun behind the windows of a room, such that even though outside there is much light, the room is in the dark because the doors have not yet been opened to it. The same for my divine will. Even though it is light that fills everything, the human act is always dark. If my divine will is not called first to rise in it, come divine will, cook in my cooking, come divine will, dance in my dancing, Come, divine will, sing in my singing. Therefore, call the divine will to rise in each of your acts if you want to form in you its beautiful day that I, God, may find in you, in each act of your acts, my days of light that surround me with divine joy, with divine delights that shall make a repeat. My delight is to be with the children of my divine will. My delight is to be with you, my little children of the divine will. I shall spend my days happy in you, not in the unhappiness of the night of your human will, but in the full dwelling of my light and of the perennial peace of my celestial fatherland. Heaven is now reigning in us. Yes, Jesus says, I shall repeat, I am. He uses God's name. Happy in this soul. I, God, here in this soul, the echo of my day spent down here on earth and the echo of my day that I do in my prison in the sacrament of love, all packed with my divine will. 
So if you want to render me happy, Jesus says, let me find in each of you the operating virtue of my divine will that knows how to form for me, Jesus, my beautiful days, my most refulgent light, all strewn with ineffable joys, with celestial divine happiness. How can you be, how can you be miserable if you're reading the divine will? You can't. Jesus is there. I fill you with my divine light, my joy, my happiness. More so since the soul from the very beginning of our creation was placed by God in a happy and peaceful day of our divine will. That's where Adam was. Inside and outside of her, everything was light, even more full midday sun. That's where we're going. That's what Jesus wants to begin to live in us now. No more darkness. Inside the soul's heart, before before her eyes, above her head, even under her steps, she could see and feel the palpitating life of my holy will. That while that kept her immersed in the fullness of divine light and divine happiness, it closed for her, closed for her all the ways and the steps of human unhappiness. God's doing this. Vine 29, 10, 4, 1931. My daughter, you must know this, that just as nature has the night and the day, so the soul has her night, the dawn, the daybreak, the full midday, and her sunset. The night calls for the day and the day for the night, but it can be said that they call for each other. As the soul sees the night coming, she abandons herself in my arms to lean her tired head upon my divine heart and to hear my heart beats. So as to draw new, new divine love during her sleep and to be able to say while sleeping, I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, my Jesus. The heartbeat. I love you. I love you. I love you. The breath. I love you. I love you. I love you. My Jesus. The sleep of one who loves me and lives in my divine will is like the sleep of a little girl who feels her eyes closing for sleep. Half asleep, she calls mama, mama, for she wants her arms and her maternal breast in order to sleep. So much so that as soon as the tiny little one wakes up, her first word is mama. This is our prevenient act. The first smile, first gaze is for her mama. Such is the soul who lives in my divine will. The soul is the tiny little girl who, as the night comes, looks for the one whom she loves to draw new strength and new love in order to love me, Jesus, more. And oh, how beautiful it is to see the soul seeking, desiring, longing for Jesus in her sleep. This seeking, this desiring, this longing call for for the dawn, forming the daybreak, It makes the full day arise that calls for the sun. And I, Jesus, rise. I, Jesus, form the course of the day and it's full midday. Jesus is doing this for for with each and every one of us to a little or greater effect. It, it, It depends on how we're reading, how we're studying. He says, I'll give this to you 30, 60 or 100 fold. What do you want? I'll give it to you. But do you know, my daughter, that here on earth, things alternate. Only in heaven, it is an always full day. And see, heaven is coming to earth. And we're beginning to live heaven on earth. That's why when I see a soul in the divine will, who says they're in the divine will, miserable, worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, the negative, I go, you're not reading. If you're reading, how can you be miserable? Jesus is He's reminding you every day, every moment of how great this gift is. Only in heaven is it always full day because my presence is perennial amid the blessed, amid the saints. So as you see that I am, as you see that God is about to leave, but do you know where I stay? I stay inside of you. Through holy baptism, we enter into God's image. 
I stay inside you. We have to begin to see God within us. And as you see that I am about to leave you, but do you know where I stay? I stay inside you. After I've instructed your soul, this is what the book of heaven is about. Giving you my lessons, this is what the book of heaven is about. Uh, before the light of my presence, so that you may comprehend them well. Study this. And they might serve you as food. Nourish yourself on this. Chew each word that Jesus gives you. Masticate these words. Chew them thoroughly. As, as, as I work during the day, I withdraw and form the sunset. And hidden within you, hidden within you, during the short night, I make myself actor and spectator of all your acts. Every heartbeat, every breath. And while for you it seems nighttime, for me it is the most beautiful rest since I, after I have spoken to you, I, God, take rest in my own word, the word that he speaks to you. And the acts, uh, and, and the acts that you do serve me as lullabies, serve me as refreshments, serve me as defense, serve me as sweet cooling of my, of my ardors of love. Therefore, let me do. That's Jesus. Let me do this. Let me do this, Jesus says. I know when the night or the day are necessary for you and for me and in your soul. And when what I want is perennial peace in you. I want you to be peaceful. That I may carry out what I want. Let me do this, Jesus says. Get out of my way, you know, in, in, in Italy to stop Ms. Basta. Jesus would say that all the time. Basta, stop. Let me do this. You know, get out of the way. If you are not at peace, I, Jesus, feel molested in my work and with difficulty, not with ease. I go along carrying out my designs. God is going to get what he wants. But we have to get out of the way. We have to stop living in our human misery. We have to begin to live this abundant life. This is what God is waiting for. This is why he gave us the book of heaven in these times, which are most difficult. I, we have to have, again, the faith of Joan of Arc. She said, I was born for this time. We have to understand that. We were predestined to live at this time, Jesus says, because Jesus says, I want to give you the book of heaven. I want to give you this book of heaven. He's doing this. All he says to us is, please stop. Get out of my way. Let me let me accomplish what I have planned. How do we do this? It's fiat. Let it be done as you say. Fiat. That's the life of Mary. Fiat. That's the life of Jesus. Thea is the life that they taught Louisa. When we say, yes, let it be done as you say, watch what God does. Get out of the way. Stop what you're doing. Let God reign. He says, I, he says this as creation was a, uh, um, uh, a divine decree. Redemption was a divine decree. He says sanctification is a divine decree. He's asked us to live at this time where sanctification is going to come upon the earth. God is going to do this. Be filled with joy, filled with peace. So we'll end now and we'll be back in an hour and 15 minutes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.